It is so beautiful, cobblestone streets, the fact that this place is so old, it has so much history, the food is so good. Why would you not want to come? I just feel like I've been missing out. I've been misled on where I'm supposed to go. You have to come to Charleston. What's up, P Nation? Today we are in Charleston, South Carolina, a place I have always wanted to come, but it's kind of on the way to nowhere from Texas. You have to be coming here if you want to come here. And we are finally in the heart of the South, I feel. This is a true vibe. It feels completely different than anywhere else I've ever been. There's so many young people, yeah. so many startups. Yeah. It's so nice, it's so quaint. The buildings are old, they've been kept up by people that are actually caring about the historical value. It's truly an amazing place. It is the quaintest city, like the most charming place I think I have ever been. I'm so excited to explore more. Zach and I love walking around. We're avid walkers. We could walk a whole city in a day. And I think you could just keep going here. Like every every street is so adorable. And the houses are so impressive. Like they've been really kept up and they're in really good condition. This is just a really impressive place. We spent a lot of time in New Orleans with Zach's family. And I always thought that was kind of like the pinnacle of French architecture in the United States. And I'm now realizing that that is not true. Like these houses are just as impressive, if maybe not more impressive than the houses that you'd find in the French Quarter in New Orleans. And that might be not what people want to hear, but it's the truth. Like I have been in both now and I am really impressed with Charleston. And the Spanish moss is everywhere. And it's just so like Southern, just like so swampy really nice and clean. It gives it such a charm to the city, you know? Because it's very quaint on its own, and then you add this like mystical swampy moss on the trees, and it really is very magical. Everything grows in the city. We just made it across the city. We are going on a boat to... Fort Sumter! I just am so excited to be on the water. We've been by the water for a little while now, living at Myrtle Beach, and to finally get on a boat is gonna be so much fun. because we have made it to Fort Sumter. The boat ride was amazing. It's really crazy because it's sinking in the sand. Apparently it used to be two levels and now it's only one. So there's a lot of people partying on my right, which is really funny to see people just relaxing on a Sunday and we're at this like very serious place. But the boat ride here was amazing. I'm really excited to learn some history. And that's our little boat. It's so cool, but it's not actually a paddle boat. They just put that little paddle there. concrete being held up by seashells. I'm so used to pouring concrete in foreign countries and they use pebbles, but here, clamshells. So this portion of the structure was built in World War II and it had two cannons that could shoot cannons out into the water past your eyesight, like farther than you can see. That's really far. <laughs> but the other part, the brick part, which has sunk, was originally used by Union forces until it burned down and then the Confederate took it over. 
So it has a lot of harsh history and it's been through a lot. And the 19, no, there are 19 cannons that they've discovered here when the National Park Service took ownership of it. And 17 were buried in the sand. So they got approval to dig up all these cannons and that's what you see. So there were in fact 19 cannons found in the sand here and it's crazy because these cannons are a lot bigger than I thought they were. I've been to a lot of Civil War sites because I grew up in the south and this is an impressive one because most of it's still standing. Normally you go to a site and it's just a field. Trying to figure out how people were so short back then. I feel like I'm in Europe again. Now we're back on the boat after exploring Fort Sumter. We're gonna head back into the city, our new favorite city, Charleston. can't even, I, it has to be because I've been locked up because of coronavirus for so long. It is so beautiful, cobblestone streets, the fact that this place is so old, it has so much history, the food is so good. Why would you not want to come? I just feel like I've been missing out. I've been misled on where I'm supposed to go. You have to come to Charleston. I love seeing working horses. They have jobs. I just think that's so cute. because like if you go down the side streets a lot of properties have golf carts and you see them driving around in golf carts on the streets so just kind of interesting like This is so cute, and this looks amazing. It has bacon jam on it, you guys. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is really good. It is sweet, it's salty, it has brie on it too, so it's creamy. This is 100% delicious. It kind of reminds me of a pizza we would used to get back in Dallas, but man, it is like, all-in-one flavor town sandwich. This is really, really good. While I enjoy this sandwich, we're kind of in the midst of a dilemma because we just bought a sandwich and we're enjoying it thoroughly, but there's this huge thunderstorm rolling through, like it's gonna hit Charleston in 10 minutes. And we're about like a 10 minute short jog away from our car. So we don't really know what to do right now. Should we wait it out? Should we make a run for it? Do I just eat the sandwich all by myself? Is that gonna help me? I hope not. We don't know what to do. <laughs> so I did end up sharing with Zach, and I think we're gonna make a run for our car now. Fingers crossed. Should've brought the umbrellas. We literally have them in the car. We always bring them. We're laughed at when we're traveling internationally because we were like, why do you always have your umbrella? And now we don't. Thank you so much for watching. It has been an amazing day in Charleston. We cannot wait to take you on the food tour. I'm so excited for the food tour, but today has been spectacular in every single way, shape, and form. Thanks for watching. What is it? The word? What is the word? What's the word? During the Confederate War. <gasps> is it called the Confederate War? What's it called? Civil War. Oh, whatever. Is it? It's a lot cleaner. I just don't even know. We've been so many places and I want to recommend places to you guys, but like this is at the top. We haven't traveled in a long time. I might be biased, but <laughs> just come here.